So I wanted to go over this. I wanted to get guys' opinion. And if they do have, uh, you know, a fact or fiction question, I would like to answer it. Okay? Or have anybody else who will call on the show tonight answer it as well. Anybody who knows more than I do. Or anybody who has been some places I haven't been to in Rio in particular. Okay? You know, because, like I said, there's violence everywhere. All right? Right now, what they got going on down there, here's a, um, the fact is they do have a lot of government unrest down there. All right? Um, Rio de Janeiro's retiree, the state of Rio de Janeiro, hasn't been paid their retired, their, their pension in four weeks. Okay? You know, the, the thing about it is the governor stole all the money. They're dealing with still dealing with a corrupt society. Okay? That's why when people ask me about businesses and stuff like that, setting up businesses in Brazil, it can be done, but you definitely got to have the right legal representation to make sure that you don't get burned. Okay? And that's going to cost some money. You know? And what's going on now, of course, with, you know, retirees like retired firemen and police officers and, you know, and people who work within the government system, they haven't been paid, they haven't been paid their pension, okay, their retirement checks and stuff like that. That's one of many things going on down there. Now, we're also dealing with a socialist society, too, as well. So there are certain things that are going on down there where the money, tax money, is not being spent properly. What they need, they need to burn the standards down there, too, just the same as we need one up here, Okay. Um, there was a strike, not, there was a, a threatened strike by the police not too long ago, um, because they weren't getting paid. They're going weeks on in without getting paid. This is all cleanup after the Olympics. Okay, I, to me, I think the Olympics and the World Cup was the worst thing to ever happen to, to Rio. Alright, because they turned Rio upside down. Now, it's still, it's, at this point, it's, it's, it's leveraging out, and it's still a good tourist destination. Okay? It's not had it all in the streets like some people may have it or talked about in the Facebook group. They had their protesting. They had their lives. They ain't no different than what we've had up here in Washington or what we had up, had up in, um, your main government um, uh, uh, capital um, capital city. People are demanding their rights, so they want to go and voice their opinion. Okay? And sometimes, it, you know, just like Black Lives Matter, when they go down there and they rally and everything like that, even though I still don't agree with what they're doing because it's black money matters in the United States, not black lives matter. You get black money, then you, get, you start getting attention. But, um, like I said, when people hold their rallies and their protests, sometimes they get out of hand. Okay? And sometimes the police are going to get involved and shit's going to jump off. Okay? But that's just the same rules going on down there, too. All right? Um, as we go on here, if anyone, anybody who wants to charm in tonight on this tonight's topic, anybody who wants to, of course, ask questions, back to fiction, Okay, or want to answer a question back to fiction. Okay, you know we got a lot of callers in the um, studio as usual. All right, you can always press one and get in on this call. We can definitely talk more about it and get it rolling here and all. Because uh, like I said, we got this. We got the, the beach party coming up, and I don't want your brothers coming down here feeling scared. Okay, because we done had four of them already. All right, and nobody has had a real serious issue as long as they listen and did things right. You know, I want to, uh, V, how is our line looking right now? Uh, I can't see the line callers, and we've got, uh, once again, uh, Cheryl stated to uh, press one if you want to get in our conversation. So before I let the first call in, uh, you may manifest the support of a couple of things that can probably be podcast series, I'll just comment on one, the, uh, the police or the government workers, some of the government workers, not all, not getting their pension.
And that the same thing is happening here in the United States. I think like Detroit, some of their, you know, when they, uh, the city of Detroit declares bankruptcy, uh, many of their uh, retirees that work for the government uh, didn't get their money right away. I don't know if it's, it's still an issue. Uh, as well as people working for even private companies, uh, the companies, some of those companies have gone public. So it looks like you got to have your own thing. And it's the same situation. I mean, you got, well, like with private companies or corporations. Well, who do you got stealing all the money at the top of the corporation? You got the, you know, the CEO stealing millions, billions of dollars, running away with all the money. Okay, and of course they get treated with kid gloves and patted on the back, and you know I'm sorry, I'm gonna you know this and that, you know. In the meanwhile, all the people who you know got their pensions depend depend on their checks every week and everything like that, they're going bankrupt. They're getting kicked. They're going they're going foreclose on their home. They get they losing their house. They losing their cars. Okay. Why the millionaire gets treated like, oh, well, you know, the millionaire CEO gets so oh, well, you know, he, he got desperate and he took the money and, you know, we're real, real sorry for him and everything like that. Donald Trump's going to pardon him anyway, you know. You know, in the meanwhile, he gets to keep all the money and everybody else is fucked. Okay. See, it just cracks me up when they're going back to the way things work in the Matrix and also all over the world. You know, when you have money and power, you can get away with anything. You're above the law. Prove me right now with what's going on in the White House. And the thing is, I mean, the guy who steals fifteen hundred dollars from the liquor store has got fifty thousand cops chasing him down the street. Guns are drawn, ready to blast on him. But the guy who steals who steals over fifteen a hundred and fifty million gets treated like, you know, oh well, you know, he's king, he'll be fine, or you know, we'll put you in a two week, you know, Club Med prison, and you know, and then we'll let you go with all the money and everything like that. You know, going quiet is great. You know, but that's just the way the system works, sadly to say. All right, you well, we're back. So the first call is uh, area code 832. Your mic is open. 832, you're on the mic. What's up, Charles? What's going on, partner? This is Brother Hiram. We were talking earlier about, uh, well, messaging each other about uh, business. I, I'm not so much worried about violence. I come from Watch California originally, so dealing mm-hmm. with violence has always been a way of life in most places I've been. Thinking. So I think, like what you said, if you're smart, you're gonna get around that anyway, because you ain't gonna go run into no crap like that on vacation. I know I'm not. So, well, yeah, uh, it's always nice to be you know, vigilant. Yeah, yeah. But I wanted to talk to you about, uh, you know. We mentioned uh, business, and you was you was saying how like it's hard to do business over there. It's, it's a lot of. No, uh, what the thing is is this, right? It's, it's not a case of whether it's hard to do, all right? It's a case of people who have never been to the country or never understand or anything like that how things work. The business practices are different. Okay, okay. you're not going to come to. For one, you have to have a business visa to start. All right. <laughs> Oh, no, man. that requirement alone is about almost a six-figure um, financial move right there. All right. Two, you have to hire a certain. Talk about a socialist society here now. So you have to hire a certain amount of Brazilians first, of course. All right, in your business. And most number one, and number one, and probably the the, the best out of the three I've mentioned so far, you got to know the language. Because that's what holds everything together. Then, on top of that, you've got to have proper legal representation. All right. Okay. Let me give you, let me give you a prime example here. All right. If we got the proper legal representation, um, you can buy a house down there, right? Yeah. And the, the seller could sell you a very oh, man, it's a beautiful house. This isn't that, right? You know. And you think you're buying your dream home. It's great. You spent about, and yeah, you might have got a great deal too. I mean, I've seen houses down there, real nice houses down there for under a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. You know, houses okay. that cost millions up here, they'll probably cost a hundred thousand down there or less. All right. But here comes the kicker. The seller 
could be selling you someone else's property. He collects on your money. Give you a bullshit deal. Okay. Anybody can make a bullshit deed or, you know, a proof of property ownership or anything like that down there. Right? Yeah. You give your money to this guy, right? He runs off with your money. Right? And then the real owners all of a sudden shows up. Hey, hey you gotta get the hell up out of my property. This is, this is the real deed. This is my property. Okay? Now you're out of whatever that you have put into that to buy in that house. You're out of. And in some and, cases, and, and, I, and I read about yeah. that. I, I, I read about it. Uh, a lot of squatters can do that. Yeah, yeah but, 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 but like you mentioned earlier, I mean, before, before I go to any country and do business with anybody, first and foremost, I'm going to deal with lawyers and consultants, especially if I'm going to do major business. And, and, and my point of view was, we already got brothers down there that actually mm-hmm. live there and are doing business down there. So mm-hmm. we ought to take advantage of the fact that we got those people there and get involved with the right experts, uh, get get the lawyers and get whatever we need. And I'm sure if you buy property, if you go mm-hmm. to a reputable uh, 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 real estate agent, I don't know what the equivalent of Century 21 is there, but mm-hmm. somebody like that, I'm sure that they can make sure you don't get beat out of your deal. You, you know what I'm saying? So no, I, I yeah, just, there are vets down there right now. You know, we got, of course, the legendary Mr. John Thompson. Been there 32 years. He actually runs a business down there. All right. Yeah, it wasn't easy for him either. You know, he had to go through a lot of government channels to get him to where he did. You know, but those are the types of guys you want to, you know, learn and, I mean, really associate yourself with to understand well, how to do it. Because I got guys who ask me every day, well, I'm coming down, I'm going to open up a barbershop. You know, Good luck. Okay. Well, my, you know, but my point was this, you know, Charles. You got a group with almost 15,000 members in it. There's a lot of economic power, and most of us are probably anywhere between 30 and 50 years old. So we are at the prime of our life. We're making money. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you have a resource here, and, and no, I can I can actually no. see I can actually see something one day where. If, if 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 we really organize it and cornered the market on Brazil, we can create something of Soul Town USA in Brazil for Black Americans who come there. Actually, like like they come to our country and people create uh, uh, Chinatowns and you know what I'm saying, Little Italy's and all of this other shit. So it's like, well, how about us going some change in our culture among people, especially our people down there already that love our culture? Here's here's the situation. Okay, right now, I've been promoting a movie. Me and Al Grease have been promoting a movie for over, going on two years now. All right? Trying to collect funds. Now, yeah, 15,000, almost 16,000 members are in just one of my groups. That's just one of my yeah, groups. Yeah, but, but, but the movie came up the what? other day in, in the discussion, Charles. Is that, is that a return to... Last time I seen something from out, it said donate. It didn't say invest. And when somebody tells me invest, and that's when you return. When you donate, when you say something, when you donate to a frustrated three, this is not Al's movie. This is not Charles Tyler's production movie or anything like that. All right? This is our movie. We all put something into it. Okay? Your name yeah, you're not talking about investing money, money Charles. You're talking about investing money. Well, when you start talking we'll talk investing, about investing, people money. want to return. I'm, just, I'm making a point here. Now, when we're talking about investing or building, all right, this is where we get lost at all the time. We can't start off with something simple. Something simple. 15,000 members in this group, okay? And let's just say 15,000 members would have put out as little as five or anywhere between five and ten dollars a piece. We can make that movie and then the sequel. Okay? Plus they did four as yeah. well. Okay? Now let me but, but, but uh, it's about it, right? I, I, now, we I, can't I, do something I, as small I, as that. Hear me out, hear me out. We can't do something as small as that, right? Now we're talking about a couple ten thousand dollars a piece or a thousand dollars a piece. 
to invest in something, to invest in building something, everything down in Brazil. Now, I would love to do it. I've been promoting that for the last four years. I've been doing my show and everything like that. Promote, build, 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 build promote, build, build, build. All right? But here we got brothers who had issues. Just, you know, I, I'm not saying every brother now. All right? Because we done raised about almost $10,000 already uh, for Plus 33. But still, I mean, we should have easily but, grew breeze past $70,000 to do that move. By now. Yeah, but 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 Charles, yeah, we it's should be working on trailer right like now. It, 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 frustrated came up like I said four days ago. Well, you know that. that I'm saying you brother came for well, let's do it. Let's do this first, and let's do that first. And I'm saying, well, the frustrated one make money. Oh, I don't know. I don't see. The first thing they want to do is they want to tell you where to put your money at. But then when you ask them for 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 uh you know some numbers and and, and let's, let's you gonna talk business. Then okay, sh show me where we gonna get our money back at. But don't come talking to me about like like donate, donate, donate. I can't donate everything. I can donate some things, but I don't want to donate uh, five or ten thousand dollars to a movie. You know what I'm saying? But I do want to donate. I do want to invest five or ten thousand dollars with a group of brothers, maybe ten to twenty. You know what? And buy an apartment complex. Just gonna uh, produce you, passive you income. Find example what's going on down on the strip right now in um, Avenue of Atlantica. A lot of others know who I'm talking about um, in that area, Coco Cabana, right? They are nothing but vacant apartments, vacant buildings, a condo down there on that strip. Okay, you should get one of them. All right. Now, yes, we should. We should. But like I said before. We are dealing with a situation to where brothers don't trust everybody. They don't trust where the money is going. And then at the same time, we're dealing with a situation where some guys just come to the group and want to watch pretty pictures of pretty girls. All right? Exactly. And it's not mine. And, not and, and, and I recognize that, but it, they don't take nothing. Bill. But if, if you give me 20 to 30 dudes with five grand, we can move some. I don't need all 14,000 of them Negroes to do nothing, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, small groups make shit happen every day. You look at gang culture. You can have a thousand Negroes from one hood and only a hundred killers. And that's the real fear and that's where the real, real power is at in that neighborhood. Everybody ain't a killer. Well, you know what I'm my saying? But this, I, my thing is this. The testing is this. We have issues with something small, like building a movie. Okay? That is my opinion, because I started to frustrate and drive Back in 2015, me and Al Grieve started the frustrated drive back in 2015. Here it is going on midway through 2017, and we're just, we're just making things run uh, out. But, 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 but Charles, you still haven't answered the question. Is there a profit involved? I mean, everybody keeps saying that this, about the movie. And I'm cool with, with the movie. I've seen it years ago. First, you got to also start off with this. You've got to have an understanding of where you're, you're investing in. Okay? Alright? This is what I mean. Stop right there. Go down to Brazil. Find your study. Find your, go down to Rio to start. Find your study. Find your business. Alright? See if this is worth even investing in. That's why I've been promoting. Come down here. Visit, 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 visit first. Alright? And when you visit, and you understand how government works, how law works, how everything works, because it's not the same here in the U.S. as it is down here. We're talking about a different country, well, different continent, different religion, different language, and everything like that, and also different cultures. So, and, you know, the thing about it is this, right? When you come down there, you get a, a sense of understanding of what's going on here. You can't come down there with the same capitalist ideal mindset as you are here, because it's different. Okay, yeah. but, but see, the thing is, Alan Harper, Harper, Harper started this 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 this, this discussion, not argument, but discussion because he said mm -hmm. he was at dinner and he overheard four Chinese men talking mm -hmm. in Portuguese, and he was kind of taken by it and, and started speaking to them in, in, in Portuguese, and mm -hmm. they basically explained that they were celebrating uh, 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 closing a deal on a big old building or, or something. And, Mm -hmm. He was, mm -hmm. you know, wondering, like, well, why can't we seem to get together and do the same thing? Well, I mean, yeah. it's obvious they, they got together and took advantage of uh, 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 of the law, the lawyers. They, 
they, exactly. they got right representation and, and, and like exactly. you said, we got Mr. John Thompson, so somebody down there knows something because he's doing business. Uh -huh. So I'm, I'm uh -huh. just saying that it's time so to, it's time to corner the market because we're going to let somebody else do it if we don't. Now, now it comes to a question of can we trust each other? Can we yeah, work? that's why I said I can. All right. Can you trust everybody? And everything is tied to paperwork. Everything, everything is tied to paperwork and lawyers. I mean, you, you know, I mean, just to get in the group, it should be a fee, uh, three, three hundred, three fifty, so we can set aside for lawyers and consultation, and then we all meet up, uh, at, not at this party, but your next one next year, and we all come with our funds, raise a sign on the dotted line after we. You know, we actually talked about that in 2015's speech party. Okay. You know, the same guys who talked about it, not even around anymore. Okay. He's a case of, like, what you're saying to me, I'll tell you this right now, you're preaching to the choir. Alright? Because I've been saying these things for the longest. Alright? Me and Alan, we sit around and we talk about these things all the time. He talks about this when I was, you know, when I was down there. Okay, you know, at all. And we started off with black just setters for now, but we're gonna keep on growing. But I'll tell you this right now, all right? That man needs more people for his tourism, you know, business going into this, this year's beach party. He only has a few guys so far who's committed to him. Okay, same deal with Mr. John. All right. So before we can talk about, oh yeah, let's do, let's do that. Let's start off with the guys who are already on the ground right now, like Alan, like Mr. John. Okay. You know, Alan, this is why he's a, he's a rookie in the game. All right, and I'm trying to help him bring him along and build and build up Black Jet Setters too. Okay. You know, but I've all I've been saying this for talking off my head. It all starts with business. Black helping black businesses off the bat. Helping black jet setters. Helping frustrated students. Okay? You know? Then we can go and do, start doing some hardcore stuff like that. Bring it down, start building. I would love to go and start getting into real estate down in business. Because I'm telling you this right now. Um, there are a lot of beautiful buildings down there. And along that strip, that strip is so darn quiet, you know, <laughs> Because I remember in 2012, those apartments were packed. Now they're practically empty, okay? And they, they're they well wet for um, coming back and buying those properties again. But we got to get our act together. What I'm saying is this. If we can't do small stuff, how can we do big stuff? How can we jump over and do big stuff? That's what I'm saying. Now I, are you still with me there? Hello? Oh, we might have mics up here. Still online? Hello? I think he, uh, this call dropped. Oh, oh wait a minute, he's back. He's back. Hold on, hold on. Around? Uh, AC, see the mic is working. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure. Yeah, man, I'm right. It fell off. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's no problem. It's no problem. I'm not but sure. I was, you. I was just listening yeah. to you. Now, the thing about it is this, right? You know, we got, like I said, we got guys on the ground right now, like Al, like, like the legendary Mr. John who's been down there. And Mr. John's been trying to get, uh, re trying to get real estate moves down in Brazil for the longest. Okay? And all the same deal yeah. with Alan. And like I said, the thing about it is, but my question is this. You know, if we, can get the small problems taken care of first. The big problems won't be no problem. We, in fact, we learn something as we go along. If we can get our movie frustrated three going, if we can get finances rolling and, and, and be able to trust each other to do it and put five well, thousand. See, I, I like how Al represents his movie. Al don't represent it as an investment. Al represents it as a donation. You got brothers online representing it like it's an investment. And then when you have some questions, they back away. Not, I, mean, I can't, can't do that type of shit. That's where the distrust is at. That's if you if you want a donation, it's a donation. And and, and, and Al, to his credit, that's the way he represented it when I seen him uh, put it up online. 
Let me tell you something. The, the best thing that ever, the, the best thing that hope, you know what, you know what builds all this Facebook group and, and um, you know, my channel and everything like that and including this blog talk radio. You know where it all started? Frustrated one. Okay. Yeah, I've seen it, I've seen it. Let me, let me like give you a little story though. You're right. Yeah, let me give you, actually, you were sick. But let me give you, um, um, a little update on that. Al came out of his own pocket to do Frustrated One. Okay? And he even came out a little bit of his, uh, his own pocket to do Frustrated Two. Alright? There's no way he can go and do a 3G and I'm coming out of his own pocket again. Okay? In fact, we all kind of got Frustrated One for free because it showed up on YouTube first. Before, the, before I went out and I bought me a DVD. Okay? You know, it showed up on YouTube first. And we had to depend on a lot of guys to go out and buy the DVD. That's right. I got to just press it up and it show up. We had to pull it from YouTube just to make that happen. All right? Because people want to do it the free and easy way. Okay? He came out of his own pocket to be frustrated one. That's how all this started. Because I was on the fence about going to Brazil until I saw that movie. Okay. Then when I went, I seen the movie, yeah. they pushed me off the fence. I went to Brazil, and then something happened that I could, I just couldn't stop talking about. And here we are now, YouTube channel, Facebook group, this and this and that. All right. So yes, that type of investment that he made opened all this up. You would not be talking to me had I, that movie probably never. Who's to say that movie probably never came along? You probably wouldn't be talking to me tonight. And we could probably wouldn't be talking about business. Okay? None of this stuff would probably be anything if it wasn't for that movie. And a lot of brothers on this call or this to me tonight will definitely agree. So to me, it was an investment out of his pocket that was well spent. Okay? Now what we can do in return is help him and invest in a movie. And when I mean invest, I mean, this movie is a part, each, each and every one of us who put a dollar towards this movie is a piece of art. Yeah, we may not see nothing in return, but it's making, it gives out information. Making brothers like me who are on the fence fall off the fence and come down to Brazil. Guess you know what else happened? Oh, wait a minute. Let me just come on into the Charles, come on into, uh, you know, Afro American men versus Afro Brazilian women movie today. You know, and well, wait a minute. There's other guys here who want to talk about business. You know what? I like Brazil so much because I visited. I got off the fence because I watched this movie. I visited the place. It looked, oh my God. And I see a couple of vacant buildings over there that look, that are, that are actually for sale. You know, maybe if I go get a bunch of brothers in the group who we can set things up with, we can buy those buildings. See how everything comes together, how everything correlates. Okay? I understand you know, the concept, same, but I just like to tell you, you know. At the same time, hold up there. At the same time, right? For us to put, you know, Tommy Sotomayor put out, try, put out a movie. Well, bullshit. I don't know why you mentioned that, Cole. Well, let me finish. He bullshit. He conned that, Cole. Yeah, he conned 400, he conned, um, $140,000 worth of money out of his listeners, out of his followers. Some of his zealot followers are still in my group, and they still defend them to his day, to the day, every time I go after them on All right? $140,000. We're not even asking for that much. But if that money came when he needed it, and yes, he didn't spend it on what he said he was going to spend it on, you know, because he's a criminal, all right? And he went, took, you know, made the moves like that. See, those are the brothers you have to watch out for. All right? But the thing about it is this. We have to start off little. Okay? See if we can even do that. Okay? If we can do that. Alright? Then we can start thinking big. Then we can start spending three or four million dollars to buy apartments, buildings, and stuff like that. I would but, like, you know what I want to do? But the problem with that concept is the concept that you're, you're hoping for, Charles, is you're hoping that large numbers of people come forward with a small amount of money. And that's, that shit does not happen in the black community. When the black community moves, it's usually a small group of businessmen with a decent sized amount of money to do something. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. they can agree as a collective usually. We don't make decisions as big groups. We don't, I mean, look at our politics. You, you hate Trump. Look,
love Obama. I hate him. I hate them both. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he, yep. and there's no way you can convince me that Obama Trump Obama and, that and Obama is anything I, different I, from Obama. But I'm just saying to you, I'm yeah. not going to get anything from either one of them, and I don't expect mm-hmm. nothing from either one of them. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying, that those are my politics and those are yours. That's what the black community is like. I can show you 10 different niggas and get 10 different answers out of all of them. So that's mm-hmm. why I would rather deal with two or three, or in this case, when we got a group of almost 15,000, just give me like 15 to 20 dudes with five grand each and let's go get it done. You know what I'm saying? Let's get it done. Well, like and, and you know, I mean, here, here's, but here's what I would like you to do now, okay? Here's what I'd like you to do. Okay, you can do this. Alright? You're understanding what you want. Alright? Come on down to Brazil. Yeah. It sounds like you want to come down here. But I don't want you to come down here on assumption. I want you to come down here on facts to and everything that you uh-huh. need. That's it. And also, let's start this. Let me finish. All right, come down here. All right. You may not make this year's beach party. You might even make catch next year's beach party or somewhere sooner than that. You know, we plan on having more beach parties than just one every year. You know. But um, come on down. All right. Hook up with a bunch of brothers who are like-minded brothers. It's going to happen. I already know it's going to happen. They're out there. All right, they're in this group. They're in my other group. All right, they all just need to come together. All right, and they bring their money together. All right, and then you hook up with a leader, a guy who has knowledge of up and down about Brazil. Okay, legal system. Okay, everything that you're going to need, government connections, everything that you're going to need. That's what a guy like Mr. John has that. All right. Alan's working on that too as well. All right. You know, okay. y'all come together with that. All right. I don't want y'all coming down here on a whim. The reason why. I don't want you, oh man, we just go, on, go down here and make business like this and that. Wait a minute. You don't know you've been to the place yet. You don't know what's going on. It ain't that simple. Okay. Come down here. Find out what it is. Don't go by what somebody said. Go by your own experience. Find out what it's all about. See where your money is going to grow at. Because demographics are different. Especially in Rio. The demographics are really, it's kind of funny. You looked at my video when I went over, when I was in Hoshinia, right? And we went all the way up to the top. Uh-huh. Okay? And I took a, I took a shot at, you see, all, almost all the favelas in the, that, that huge favela that we were in, right? And no more than a yeah. mile away is the richest part of Rio, by La Chizuka. Yep. I saw it's separated it. by the mountains. It's separated by a mountain from the poorest area to the richest area. That's how the demographics are all crazily set up in Brazil. Okay. Hmm. No, you got to find your demographics. You got to find where business is going to flow and flourish. Now, right now, we go going through a situation but, uh, where people, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, so, I, I always felt like, you know, a, a certain amount of business would come from people to stay there, but also just the drive of that uh, force of, uh, certainly there's a group of black people that seem to be interested in Brazil. Uh, of course, of course. The, the Brothers movie wouldn't be as popular online as it is frustrating. Mm-hmm. If, if it mm-hmm. wasn't a group of people, we, we've always mm-hmm. had a fascination with Brazil. Now, mm-hmm. uh, what Mr. Thompson and, and Mr. Harper is doing and, and yourself is y'all actually putting a footprint down there to make mm-hmm. it more comfortable and easy for us to get down there to feel exactly. good about it. And so exactly. that footprint needs to grow is all I'm saying. And, and oh, as yeah. it grows, we, 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 we can ensure, I mean, look, black people, in this country, the United States are the ninth largest uh, 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 amount of wealth on planet Earth if we were a country into ourselves. So black people in this country, we got some money as a collective. And we spend yeah. more of it than anybody because we don't have no yeah, savings. So what I'm saying is something done by us in this country. Yes. Exactly. So, uh, you know, all I'm saying is it would be nice that when this wave, because this wave has already started, but when it reaches mm-hmm. its, its mass and its potential, all the way, I mean, when it gets right
right where it wants to be, then we be in position to take advantage of it instead of having our people go to the Asian guy. I mean, look, you remember the 80s, and you remember the Asian guy selling the African medallion to black people. I mean, I don't want to see that shit again. I don't want to go to a, a fish fry place with the Asian man selling me my, my fish and my soul food like you see in Los mm-hmm. Angeles now. You know, we, we got to start to put ourselves in a position to win. You got people coming up goddamn uh, uh, 10,000 miles away and able to get business done and we just, they can't get nothing done. And it's just, we just got to stop making excuses. Well, and, uh, always, you know, you brothers aren't making that footprint. Y'all not making it. I've always said this. Y'all actually doing something. I give you credit, but I'm, I'm just saying uh, us as a collective of uh, brothers. I'm not pointing out to nobody specific. I'm saying us as a group of people. We just have to get it done and stop with these damn excuses. And that's, that's no, what I would, I would love to do. And it, it needs would to start with that. something like a piece of property. I would love that. I would love that. I definitely would love to see that happen. I've been screaming. You can't, I would love to see Black Wall Street in Brazil, South America. All right, starting off maybe in Brazil. Yeah. My dream. Let me tell you something. I'm, I'm with you, brother, but I'm also staying realistic too with you. All right. I'm trying to let you know everything, not the things that you are, okay, well, I'm just going to go to, you know, you know, I'm starting business in Brazil. You ain't been there yet, all right? The thing about it is this, right? They don't understand the way everything is down there. But I'm with you because my dream is for us to come down there and just take over, okay? Now, whether their racist race society down there is going to allow that, I don't know. But I think we can negotiate better with them than we can get with the United States. Because every time we try to build up a Black Wall Street in the United States, it gets burnt down. Okay. I don't see it ever yeah. happening. Okay, in the U.S. I've given up on the U.S. I, but I have not given up on countries like Brazil to where I can see a whole lot of potential. Yes, we need a whole lot of brothers coming in with money and ready to do it and ready to invest. Okay, a way to make that happen, and you know it requires trust, understanding of how the system works in that that foreign country. All right, the trust is the biggest one. All right, yeah, you know, a lot of guys and trusting each other first, and then trusting the people you got to work with outside of them. We, I yeah, try to run. I understand that, but. I try to run this group right. I try to run me, me, Alan, a- Alan, Al Green, you know, you know, Kevin, you know, I mean, all of us, you know, Kevin Teddy, Teddy Doyle, all my admins, okay? We try to run this like a brotherhood, all right? And we start off as a brother. Well, that's the only thing I know how to operate under. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm actually in a fraternal order, so I understand exactly what you mean. And when, and, when you come in, and, and when you're dealing with that type of mindset, then you, yeah. you're responsible to the group because if not, you're going to be held accountable to that group. So I mean, exactly. I understand what you're saying. Exactly. So, we, I mean, do you trust your brothers? You know, that's Man, the with thing. my life I would. <laughs> Exactly. So that's the way I try. I, be, I am a, what we call a loyalist. I'm loyal to everybody who's been loyal to me. Okay? All right? Because yeah. I believe the, the way, same way. You put out, what you put out is what you get back. Okay? And the thing about it is, I can, you know, okay, man, look, I got this 20, I got, look, I got an extra 20 grand here. All right? I want to start investing in real estate here in Brazil. I want to get a lot of dudes right now, 20 grand, about at least 10 dudes to match you. And that, that would be a start. Then we'll go to a lawyer that was, um, that was referred to by maybe a um, John Thompson or maybe a Alan Harper, guys who've been down there for a while. Okay. You know, and trust yeah. this lawyer or trust this real estate company and everything like that that we can come into. All right. And then we grow from there. Then we grow from there. Okay? Nobody getting the hype on nobody else. I mean, we all, we, united, we stand, divided, we fall. That's how all the yeah. Chinese people can go all over the world. But you know what? They got Chinese stores down, they got Chinese stores on the corner down in Brazil too. 
Okay. Sell them for good. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. They're all over. What, that, that's what, and that's what Alan, that's what Alan seen. That's what Alan was talking about. They're all over the place. You know why? Let me tell you something what a Chinese guy told me one time, right? A black man went into his store, right? And tried to sell him a product, yeah. you know, for half the price of the guy who's been selling him the product. Okay? Mm-hmm. Selling him the same product. You know what he told the guy? The brother? He says, no thank you. Well, I'm giving you 50% off of what the, you know. No, but that is my, that, what did he say? He said, um, he said, we Koreans, he was a Korean as a matter of fact, we Koreans only buy from Koreans. See? Nothing personal, I've nothing heard the same story before. Nothing personal, nothing racist about it. That's just the way it is. Us blacks won't buy. Yep. From each other. And that's been our downfall. We are 30, we control 37% of the spending in this country. And that's why I've always said it's not black lives matter, it's black money matter. But, okay. But, but the black money from this country, when it shows its face in Brazil, needs to spend money with black people that we know and are already in position to, to take advantage of, of, of that marketplace and provide a service to our people. Before anybody else get a hold of them. Then we also, like I said, and number one, and that's what Alan and, John, John, and Dr. John, Dr. Thompson is doing. I mean, our uh, brother Thompson is doing. I mean, that's what they're doing. And, yeah. and we just need to be ready for when that onslaught come on. There are that, 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 that we get that pe- that we get those people first. Well, for one, we all people I start with. Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. brother. Go ahead. You go ahead. Go ahead. I said. Uh, I said. I said. You, 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 I remember, I remember, uh, working in, in, uh, in Hollywood and, uh, off of the Universal City where Universal Studios is at. And I would get so many black people who would come to town, uh, uh on a travel agency and they put together this package for these black folks. And, and, and I would run into them and they'd say, well, where are all the black people at? I said, well, what you talking about? Black people is down in LA in the inner city. Well, our travel agent did this and did that. I said, no, 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 no. This is OJ's concert going on tonight right at this place. Okay, go over here. Go we'll meet some black folks. And once you get in there, they're going to take you back to another black people. But, well, this is what happens to our people. And this is why some of our people hate traveling. It's because when they get in these places, they do what everybody else do. They don't ever see any sign of themselves or see anything coming from their own people. And so they get a little discouraged. I mean, that's why the Europeans, I expect the Europeans pretty much do. Let me tell you something. I, uh-huh. I've been on both sides of that coin, all right, and down even in Brazil. I went over to Barajuca. You know, Barajuca is like a different world over there, all right? And nothing but, you know, what the equivalent of Brazilian white folks, what they call themselves over there. All right, that's all you name is on the school, sir. That is the thing you're going to see the black man over there as the, as the uh, maid or as the um, gardener or something like that. You know, that's what you're going to see. All right? But then we're outside there. Okay. And I'm not saying that all blacks live here. Okay? But I went into the favela. Okay? At least the safe ones are the ones that I felt that I was, you know, safe to be in. And, yes, I even partied with them. Okay? You know, I've been all over that spectrum. Okay. You know, what we're trying to bring, okay, right now, is understanding. That's what this show is about tonight. Because we got right now, we got guys out here who are saying that they, they don't feel safe coming down here. All right? Because they're hearing this and they're hearing that. Okay? Uh, that sucks. I ain't worried about that. And, yeah, but it's, but it, you know what? Let me tell you something. What was last year's, um, excuse? Oh! Zika virus. Oh, the crisis. Yeah, but the Zika virus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking Zika about virus. the virus. <laughs> the price you couldn't get past on because that's what the airlines were going to do. But the Zika virus was the last, was, was, well, I don't know, man. That's what I was mainly hearing from these. Oh, man, the Zika virus. Man, I don't know about, man, I, I've been bit by a million mosquitoes in Brazil and nothing happened. Okay? Nothing. Except for me smacking yeah. the best basket away. 
Okay. You know, that's a bunch of bullshit. Okay. And all we all we, what we have to do is to do the other thing that brothers have, not just the trustworthy thing. But how can we build business and trust? And we also have this other chain of matrix, fear. Okay? Fear, well, man, I, uh, this is what I get. I these the type of emails I get every day. Well, I heard there's trainees down there. Uh, any more trainees than what we got up here? <laughs> if, you're for, if you're looking for a trainee, best believe you'll find one. But if you're not looking for a trainee, and you're not drunk, you won't be taken advantage of, and you'll be fine. Okay, I, I haven't... I still I don't know. I don't know how you go to a country like that and just get drunk to the point of you just lose all, you know, if you lose your wallet. I mean, I could never let my guard down that much well, around nobody. Well, I'm talking about even where I'm at already. I would do that. It happens to the best of us, guys. When you, when you, let me tell you something. When you put some, when a guy's worked hard and they're not, they've been doing their thing and they come to a country like Brazil and they party hard, and they party maybe a little too hard to their to their understanding. And they sit in there and they get drunk or, and the girls feel them up and everything like that. They think they got a nice little fine joint sitting on your lap and a nice little fat ass and everything like that, but you're drunk as hell. Next thing you know, her pie her hands are going places, you know, that that, you know Oh man, she's grabbing my nuts. Oh, you know. Oh, that's grabbing my ass. She's really grabbing your wallet. I and mean, I've heard situations with chicks. Oh, no, man. Alright, I've heard situations with chicks. I ain't never, I ain't never been that drunk. Uh, the they just, they don't want the whole wallet. They just hit you for the money. Okay? But the thing about it is, like I said, it's happened to the best of us. No, it doesn't make you, I mean, cause like I said, it's some dudes, oh man, I'm coming down here, I'll be straight. But then they come running up to me, yo man, somebody just hit me, man. I mean, not hit me physically, but somebody just hit me for my wallet, man. You know, somebody just hit me for my iPhone. You know, I've heard it. <laughs> I've heard it. Okay, that's why I always tell brothers to be vigilant, to be careful. Man. Somebody coming in that you don't want in your boundaries, be back. Okay, not being afraid is different. But there's some places we're going to point out to y'all. Y'all come down here in November. We're going to tell y'all, look, there's some places in that area, this area, or that area, where you can get hit at. Okay? And you can get hit and don't even realize you got hit until you get home and realize you're a little bit of wallet short. Okay? You know? Yeah. So, you know, well, that's the thing. What, what I'm going to do is, like, at all. All right, you know, um, I'm interested in Brazil, and I'm not going to make the party this year, but I'm going to definitely make the next one. Ever. And, uh, you know, I plan on traveling the group, period, or places. So. And, but I'm just going to get off on that, because I'm sure some other people want to say something. Sure, sure. Like I said, we just want to let you leave you leave with this, man. Even if you don't make it to, the next, to this year's big party, you know, come on down for a little trip, maybe next, sometime going to all, going to one seat. You know, maybe if you could just get maybe a lifelong dream. I always say 10 days, but, it's been a you know, long you can slip away I'm separated. Separated. Yeah, if you just somehow slip seven days into your schedule and make it down here, go ahead, make it down here, you know? Take a tour with Black Trip Study, you know? Or something like that. You know, you know, you know, rock out maybe with Mr. John too. You know, maybe pick Mr. John's brain, you know, for what, 30, 33 <laughs> years he's been in Brazil. Okay? You know, so just keep that in mind, uh -huh. bro. I really appreciate your call there, man. All right, man. All right. Thanks, man. You take care now. All right. Now, we got still, uh, we went a little, that was a good conversation. That's the second conversation, to, you know, back and forth, you know, conversations that we should have here when we're talking about building a life that's not building businesses in Brazil. Okay. You know, we do have, you know, like, um, her man, her man said, if I messed up your name, brother, I'm sorry. I, all right. He said that um, we do have brother power in this city. One of my groups has over 15,000 members. Okay. My other groups have anywhere between three and 5,000 members. Okay. And 
we should be thinking more along the lines of building abroad. Living abroad, yes, is one thing. All right, because America ain't getting any better for the black man. People always up here and tell me, come on back here, fight the good fight. You know, come on, we've been trying to fight the good fight for 450 years, and every time we build a black Wall Street, guess what happens? It gets burned down. Black Wall Street should be abroad for black American men. Okay? We should be saving up our money and directing it abroad, or building money situation such as forex trading or binary options trading like my brother kevin um kevin teddy waffle does okay yeah, i'm sure a lot of y'all been in his classes okay you know stuff like that that will fuel your financial ability to maybe buy abroad buy business but it all starts with buying property abroad and everything like that you know but we also have the, we also got to get rid of the myth about living in this case in Rio, okay, you know, the myths, all right, about living in this city. All right, for a lot of folks who want to probably start off by living in this city, even though Rio is not Brazil. Rio to me is only the gateway to Brazil. All right, there's still Belo Horizonte. There's still Brasilia. There's still Fortaleza. Fortaleza in my opinion is an upcoming city. All right, because it has a whole lot of new properties up there for very cheap, or even as low as, well, I've seen as low as $25,000, something real nice to it, that, okay? You know, so these are new places and new and new, and new places to go to. All right, we still got a lot of a lot of listeners video here. If you want to get on tonight's topic, and like I said, crack the facts and fiction of uh, Brazil, uh, press 1 to unmute yourself, and we can get in and get uh, callers here. Uh, v, you still with me there, brother? Yeah, we got, yeah, sure. we got a, a bunch of calls. Before before we go to the next, let me. I wanted to chime in on uh, the conversation you just had. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty good to quiet not only you, probably most of the regular listeners here. Charles Tyler, Al Green, and many of the people who called into this podcast, you guys are educators, and. Although, you know, it, it sounds good with the real estate. I, I, I like Charles the way, the way he takes this show for the last four years because when you're talking about investing in real estate internationally, that's very specific. Exactly. And, and I know a lot know of that people that, that are part of the forum, a lot of people that are part of the forum are thinking about be, becoming part of the forum are already in the forum. They're still at the, how can I get a passport thing? <laughs> so yeah. we can't jump from how to get a passport, or you just got a passport, to international real estate investing, and you don't even know the language, or haven't even visited Puerto Rico. Man. So I love the way, life. Charles, you have really paced us at a slow pace. And, you know, for people that, because some people have, you know, they can't even, it's a big deal to go from the east side of town to the west side of town. Okay? So it seems like people that are ready for that, they go, for people that are ready for the DR, great. For people that are ready to go to Trump. But you, you, you're really patient, but it, 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 for instance, I buy myself about 15 to 20 acres of land a month right here in the United States. Uh, I, I don't really talk, I don't talk about it on this one. And I, I don't take any thought. But that's not mm -hmm. something for a beginner. Alright, so, I mean, some people in the group are ready to do that, but it, it, here's just a suggestion, Charles, because you are an educator, and you have other people in the group that are educated, probably everybody who calls into the show, they're educators at some point. You might want to open up the Charles Charles School of International Culture, whatever. Because the fear and the mistrust go away once people get educated. And that's what you've been doing. You've mm -hmm. been, like I said, some people freaked out, man, I got a record. Now 
by listening to the Charles Tower show, as long as the person doesn't have pending charges, they yeah. can get a passport. Yeah, if they if they cover it, put like that's they pay the debt to society. Yeah, the thing about it is they pay the debt to society. They're not state property. That means they're not on probation or anything like that. Okay, you got yourself clear, and maybe anywhere between seven. 10 years after the crime, and maybe shorter than that, okay, you can still get a passport. I know I know right now about at least six guys who have criminal records, but because they did all, went through all those aspects, someone, I know two guys that got their record expunged just so they can get their passport. They spent some money to do that. As long as it wasn't a murder or anything like that, they got their passports now, you know. It's just, it's like you said, it's, it's all about not being ignorance. Is ignorance can be, you know, can shut everything down. Ignorance is, the, is basically the mother of fear, mother of not knowing, and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And the one thing exactly. that can be mother of assuming. Okay, you know, and when we get past ignorance and get past and get to knowledge, facts, okay education and everything like that on what we're doing in this case a lot of others want to come to brazil you know they want to come to brazil and they they really tired of the united states the matrix mindset and everything like that they want to come to brazil but i also decide that you know what if you're going to come on down here right i want you to know everything i'm not going to sit up here also and put show you nothing but the good without showing you the bad too Okay, and then when you come here and you wit- and you witness this for yourself and you go through your own experience and everything like that, then it's your decision from there. All right, there are going to be people that are, that are with the that are in our circle. They're going to be there to guide you in your quest and your journey through Brazil. Whether you decide to do a business in Rio or you decide to do a business in Fortaleza or you decide to do a business in, in Bahia. Or you try to live in these places and maybe just do online businesses like we, like I do, and stuff like that. My ultimate dream is to build a community in Brazil, starting with African American men. We built it and then mixing and blending with Afro Brazilians or Brazilian people in general. You know, but it all starts with knowledge. Okay, it all starts with the trip. Like I said, it wasn't for frustrated. It wasn't for Al coming out of his own pocket, okay, and putting that movie out. I probably would have never went to Brazil. I was on the fence. Oh, it's far. I got to go get a visa. I got to do this. I got to do that. You know. And then when I seen that movie, I said, you know what? Let's give it a try. And now look what happened. The rest is history. Here we are. All right, the, uh, still got a mic hot open on that? Yeah, yeah, we got a ton of them, so let's get to them. We got a list now. Right, well, let's go to, uh, Australia. Oh, brother from down under, my co-host just showed up. Teddy Doyle in the Hey, house. how you doing, Joe? What's going on, brother? Hey, how you doing, Charles? Hello, man. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear All you. All right, what's going on, man? Oh, uh, not much. I just, uh, woke up. I just got, you know, I just finished, um, my night shift. I was just, uh, napping a little bit. Oh, uh, okay. It's about uh, morning. Uh, it's Friday already it's where you are. It's afternoon now. Yeah, yeah I just had a call. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Well, it's, yeah. it's just a little after 10 here. Okay. Yeah, it's just so, different. different times are so different. Yeah. Uh, that's crazy. But yeah, man, I, you know, wanted to see if you want to charm in tonight on today's um, uh, topic, you know, fact or fiction about Rio. Oh, I think you could, well, a lot of people are assuming I hate that, that it's true instead of getting to like, know the facts. Uh, you know, Instead of like assuming, get on that plane and find out for yourself. 
You know, when people well, you assume, make it. Right? yeah, but when people assume, they burn people like you and me. When someone starts off with a sentence, I heard, anything they say after that does not mean it's irrelevant and I don't even want to hear from you. All right? Because people like you and me who put in the work, especially you, uh, uh, you, um, Teddy, you done came, you, you put in about what, 15,000 miles every time you come to the jail. One way. Yep. Mm hmm. Okay. But when people, oh, I heard it's this down there. I heard it's that down there. Wait a minute. Did you put in the miles? I put my 6,000 miles one way. Did you put in yours? Did you pay for an airline ticket? Did you pay for a room and board? Did you come down there and see and everything like that? But you heard? You heard it's pretty cheap. Oh. Okay. You know that's where things start to come. That's when you put in your dollars. Because you know, and you know means you were, you were there and you seen and everything like that. Okay, assuming, I, I, I can't stand it because it's an insult. It's an insult. We put in the work to come to the place like this, alright, and then we got people who never been there. Like you troll on YouTube, never been to Brazil, never been anywhere, probably stayed in Mexico, alright, you know, and trying to tell us, and all the trolls that did that also, you know, hate on the Charles Tyler show and everything like that, it's cool, keep coming. But you try to, one thing I can't stand that y'all do is y'all say, I heard, I assume. Every single woman in Brazil is having each other. Every single woman in Brazil is a prostitute. It don't sound realistic. Oh, wait a minute. Only the black, that's what only the black people mess with. African American men mess with. They mess with only the prostitutes. They mess with only the women with HIV. I got something for you, all right? You know, I've been cooked before, and I've said this in previous shows. I've been cooked before, and God, and thank God, I don't have no disease, all right? But the two times I've been cooked wasn't in Brazil, okay? It was right here in good old U.S. of A. Clap City, okay? Got more claps than a Coliseum, okay? And these assumptions, you know, is mainly based off of ignorance and hate and division. And to the brothers who listen to it and accept it, okay, they are completely hurting themselves and cheating themselves out of possibly a life-changing situation. You know, how many times you heard I heard, um, Teddy? Man, uh, oh, too many times. Hey, look, if I heard I heard and I, had, I and I get a dollar for each time I hear that, I'll be a wealthy man. I heard, I heard this. I heard they they gonna kidnap you. I heard they gonna uh you get the green card. You know, I heard they you oh, know man. this probably so. I say. Wait a minute, this is prostitution in the United States. This is prostitution in Europe. This is prostitution in Asia Pacific. This is prostitution in, uh, in Australia. So, so what are you trying to get at? I mean, what are you, what are you, what are you trying to get your point at? They get, they get real jealous when, uh, when they, they get real jealous when you decide to activate your passport. They start traveling. Yeah. People get real, get real jealous. That's just well, you have to be careful. I mean, look, look. My post, like I said, if I had a dollar, if I had a dollar, just in my YouTube channel alone, I probably would have two million dollars. But every time I heard, or they have HIV there, or they have this and that there, wait a minute. Is Brazil the only place where HIV is? You know, I find Brazilian women, when it comes down to sex, very responsible. You know why? It's 
not just a case of I want to live. It's a case of I can't afford to get this disease. How about that? They don't have. I can't well, Charles, they don't time. have no social programs. They don't have no social programs like that, like in the states or yeah. these little Western developed countries. You you get HIV in the states. You get you get connected to so many disability programs that will help you live. They'll buy your um. Uh, they will buy your medicine and everything like that for you to get by. In Brazil, it's sink or swim. If you get HIV, you gotta go get your medicine. If you can't afford it, you're fucked. So yeah. don't get me down there. Don't get me down there. You know, they don't want it. Okay? And they're very, very you know, very responsible sexually. Here in America, where these chicks, like I said like yesterday, the other day show, these chicks are willing to risk their lives so they can get a paycheck. So they can get on um, child support and stuff like that. Come on, man. How many do look at Maury? You know, I don't look at the show anymore. But come on. They got chicks that be on the show five, six, seven, eight times. One chick was on the show 20 times. Okay? 20 times. Yeah, I heard the result. You are, are not the father. What's the first thing the chick yeah. trying to say? Yeah, when you, you knew yeah, that the guy was break days yeah. yeah, but here's the thing. What cracks me up is that the first thing that the chick Accuses the dude of now. This could be dude five or dude ten or dude eleven, right? You know, don't matter. I'm putting you on child support. Okay. Wait a minute. I'm on your sexuality. You know, that's no crazy stuff. It's not embarrassing. It's not embarrassing in front of the whole world. Exactly. When they get the case, since you don't come out, you come out negative. All of a sudden, she just fall out. She just fell faint on the floor. Or she run in the back, back stage. Or was on the yeah, couch. On the floor and stuff like that. You know, and the <laughs> thing about it is, the thing about it is that if those women are willing to risk their lives sleeping with that many men just so they can get a paycheck, that's to tell you something. All right? Now we go to a country where that system does, that system does not exist. Okay? There isn't going to be mm-hmm. no way check the store, let a dude run up in you all. Some random dude run up in you all. There isn't going to be no payday for this. Except for getting HIV or getting AIDS. Okay? Mm-hmm. Don't uh, like saying, no, hell no, I'm not just a police. Condom, condom, condom. All the time. Okay? Yep, yeah, thanks. And all. And the few times I have, well, the one time I have gone bareback was with my ex, with my ex, and even she came up with an HIV test and showed it to me, just to prove she didn't have anything. She went on my word. Okay. Mm-hmm. And she trusted me. Okay, I knew I was clean. Even though I had a, a test a long time ago, but I knew I was clean. Okay? And she, mm-hmm. I, even after that, she went on and had another test, and still, she was straight. Just to prove I wasn't lying for her. Okay? The thing about it is, these, these fictional bullshit that goes on about Brazil is because black men are finding the option and they're leaving. They can still be with their black woman except for they're being with a different one. And that's just not Brazil. You can also, like I said before, black people spread around the world. Black women's options are everywhere. Even in Southeast Asia, even in Thailand. It's different global. types of black, it's, uh... black people. 
They, well, actually, I saw uh, black people in Poland. I find that kind of strange, but I did. Yeah. It's all over the table. It's spreading like Wi-Fi. Yeah. And they even got black about, Russians. Yeah, black black Russians. Russians. You know, it, the, it, the thing about it is that people, because of the division, people try to divide us or try to run away from being black because black is we consider it negative. Like I said, it's the um, systematic just mindset of slavery that still goes on and everything like that. Um, Teddy, I want you to co-host with me right now. I don't want to bring on yeah, no problem. Call. Okay. Next mic open. Did yeah, I didn't get the uh, the area code? Yeah, five hundred five area code. Five hundred five area. Uh, uh, five hundred five area code. You might be late. Yeah. Five, how's, every, uh, how's everybody doing? Hey, brother, how you feeling? Brother? How you doing, brother? Oh. I'm doing good. Doing good. Thank you guys for the show. Thanks for hosting it. And good info. And I have some questions, real quick. Um. Hey, with the Brazil visa. How long can you stay down there, like, in days in a row? Like, can you stay down there for, like, a year, six months? How does that, how does that work? Okay, I'm going okay, to break that. You want to okay, take this I can one? Answer you... that, brother. Well, mm-hmm. go ahead, Charles. Go ahead, Charles. Right. Well, it's like this. Uh, Teddy, I'm not sure if you got an Australian or American visa, but if you got an um, American, if you got a Brazilian tourist visa, right? Mm-hmm. You only can stay 90 straight days. Okay. 90 straight days before you have to go and go out the country. And you don't necessarily have to come back to the U.S. I'm going to tell you a couple of options we have here. But we're going to start okay. off with this. You don't, you know, you can stay 90, I would say, stay up to about at least 87 days and on your 87th day. Go to a neighboring country like maybe um, Argentina, Argentina, or Gu- uh, Guyana, or Uruguay. Mm-hmm. Okay, and get a stamp there. Stay there for maybe a day or two, and then mm-hmm. you come back and you reset your, your three months right there. The remaining uh-huh. three months you got left in the year, because you only get a total of six months. Oh, okay. All right. Now here's okay. another. Option. All right. Especially if you hook up with the right connections in Brazil, right? Mm-hmm. Whether it's Mr. John or or um, Alan Harper's Black Jet Setters and everything like that, right? You could get an extension, another ninety day extension. That cost, I think, that cost is about a thousand reais. Somebody can correct me on that. that about a thousand reais, which would be about around three hundred and some change, maybe. Okay, mm-hmm. and that you have to go back to the airport, go to the federal office, the federal office to get that. And that will extend you out another three months right there. Then there's other tricks such as become getting um uh going to school down there, and the more mm-hmm. popular thing as far as going to school, getting a student visa, which which is uh, two years, and that's mm-hmm. straight out two years, right? Is um. You go to a, um, a Portuguese um, Portuguese language school. Mm. All right. So you, your visa is going to help you not only stay there longer, but it's also going to help you get your language skills down. Yeah. You know. So there's, like I said, these are there's many ways you can do it. But like I said, you can end up so first you don't want to go over your visa because that's where it starts to become a money thing. All right. All right. Start charging you anywhere between, I think, it's anywhere between four to eight AI per day. They're okay. charging days over your visa. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then if you get some shit, and let's just say you get into a fight, God forbid, and the cops get involved and they find out that you already extended your visa, you can find yourself being deported. Mm-hmm. Get into oh. all that. Mm-hmm. You know. 
And now we got idiot Trump in there and making, you know, doing everything he's doing to piss people, push other, piss other countries off. For all we know, we can go out of our beach and we still get kicked out of the country. <laughs> okay? Because of this asshole. Okay? You know, but you've got to be extra careful now. So, but these are ways you can avoid running into issues that way. All right. Thank you. And, and the next question is, speaking of accidents, um, insurance, you know, like you said, heaven forbid something happens, is mm -hmm. in travel insurance, what do you, what, what would you guys' recommendations be for that, if anything? Or is this is your job? Is you looking to make sure your job insurance tra 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 is over? I don't. That depends on your job insurance carrier. Mm -hmm. If your insurance carrier is you know how insurance companies are, they're trying to, they're trying to squeeze every little way of getting out of the situation. Yes, sir. Okay. We, we just had a situation recently, a couple of months ago, where one of the brothers in the group passed away down there in Brazil. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we had to get his body back some way or another. We opened up a go, a go for me in two groups. And we were able to rally up enough cash to get him back home. Mm -hmm. You know, and all. Um, there are insurance companies that are. In fact, I'm gonna look up one right now. There, there are insurance companies that will cover you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in a place. Now, there's also life insurance companies too. Yeah. All right, now you want to find out whether your, your um, life insurance policy will cover you abroad. Yeah, good point. Okay, so where they can collect the body and bring it back to the United States. Okay. Okay, or whatever you want done, because there's some brothers, such as myself, I don't want to come back to the U.S. even when I'm dead. <laughs> okay? Okay. All right, go and cremate me, take me up to the place of being the statue and spread my ass. Okay. That's yes. what I want. Okay. And one last question for the brother from Australia. Uh, just interesting. How, how does that, uh, how, what's the process of getting a visa in Australia, a Brazilian? And, and what, what route does that do? You go to Chile or something? Fly? No, 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 bro. No, no, bro. Uh, brother, uh, if I wanted to get a visa, are you talking about getting a visa in Australia or getting a visa yeah. in Brazil? Uh, no, a Brazilian visa in Australia in the, in the, in the airline route, the flight pattern. Oh, okay. That's real. Okay. The same process. Um, you go, you, you have to go online. Now, that's the process now. Go online. That's the fastest way. Mm -hmm. uh, fill out your information. They got different passports, different prices for each country. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the U.S. is, uh, it's like in Australian dollars is 288. Um, mm -hmm. Australia is like 165. But uh, mm -hmm. the Australian, uh, visa, I mean, the Brazilian visa to Australia only lasts for one year. And you can stay up to 90 days. Okay. Now the U.S. passport, which I have also the Brazilian visa ten years. That's the difference. Oh, okay. Because uh, there's a different relationship between Australia and Brazil, and you know, different relationship between the uh, United States and Brazil. That's, that's how it is. Uh, once you go, go, go through that process, um, you set up an appointment. Mm -hmm. You go to another portal. You got to fill out another application. Once you got that out of the way, uh, two, uh, two presentable, uh, passport photo ID, fake statements, a, uh, generic, uh, uh, flight, uh, itinerary, um, I want to make sure you have enough money to take down there too. Right. They want, you know, they don't want no broke people down there. Yeah. They don't want no some people want no burden. They ain't got enough problems as it is. Right. Once that's the, uh, you know, once you know you have enough money to maintain yourself, uh, how long are you going to stay down there? Um, 
course, they do a little background check on you. Um, uh, if your child support in Australia, uh, you know, Australia is pretty more lenient. As long as you ain't got no, oh, oh, like, over the top amount. People got, uh, they got child support balances, but I got, I was able to travel. I've been traveling like, been to Brazil like three times, so it's no big issue. As long as you stay on top of it and you pay it, mm-hmm. the child support ain't gonna, and they're gonna, they're not gonna hit you up. Like versus in the United States, you know. After a certain amount, they, they just won't let you travel. I heard right. that once in the situation, um, when the admin, he was going to the airport in the United States. They asked him a question. Do you own child support? He said, no. I'm not married. I don't have any kids. But they don't tell you something about, you know, they don't want the black man traveling. <laughs> oh, yeah. They'll ask you straight away, do you owe child support? Yeah, they they you reacting on the assumption because you're black. And, you know, yep. typical of racist America, you know, and all, uh, oh, oh, you, you're the wrong name. I'm sorry. Yeah, right. Yeah. Hey, Charles, I get this question. Oh, you, you traveling to uh, Austria? Uh, are you in the military? I get that all the time. No, I'm not, not in the, the military. military. <laughs> exactly. Like I said, you know, the, the reason why they're not being... And I used to see black men on the airplane. Okay, you know they don't, they don't do it because we don't. And for little, for real, that question. There was a video recently, right, that I seen um, on Facebook where um, this woman and her daughter and both her kids, rather, they were stro- she was rolling a stroller through the, um, I think it was Tiananmen Square in China, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the Chinese people at all, they were stopping and taking pictures with her because they never seen a black woman before or a black child before. You know? So they're doing selfies with her. They're walking around looking like superstars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, I've heard Charles, that about Charles, Charles, also, too, also, too, they'll ask questions on your professional athlete. Look, <laughs> that's too. I get that a lot. I get that a lot. Yeah. They think I'm a football player. You, you know, know they associate so they, they, African American as yep. money. Yeah, they take a whole lot of money to travel. So they're yeah. as soon as they're all these guys are athletes. And I've been told by a professional, I've been told by a professional, uh, fighter, um, uh, African Americans, you know, y'all have the money. So they're going to assume that you're an athlete. Or a former athlete. Yeah. And, um, this kind of, this, this is, um, uh, you know, in these dangerous people, they get, uh, treated badly by their own, you know, by their whole country and stuff like that, you know, because of the white man, white supremacy, you know, they took over and take the land and, they perceive these properties and stuff like that. And um, same as Brazil, too. They they got racism. Australia got racism. And um, I said, why y'all treat the African Americans uh, better than you all than, than, than the Aboriginals or, you know, or, or the afro Brazilian? Why do you treat them better than, than, than them to us? And I was told by an Australian woman, you're the, type, you're the right type of black person. I was looking <laughs> sideways. Oh, oh my God. God. It fucked me up right there. You're a good nigga. I'm the right type of you're black person. You're a good nigga. I'm the right type of black person. Mm-hmm. Man, I look at my, like, I wish I had a face Kevin Hart look on my face, like, break my eyes, and say, I'm like the right type of black person. She said, look, she said, African American, it's cool to be African American. Because they like the way we dance. They like the way we carry ourselves. They like the way we dress. They like the way we fly across the court on the basketball court. You know? Yeah. You know? They they, they like Denzel Washington. I mean, yeah. You know? Yeah. They like Beyonce. Um, yeah. I, like I said, 
as I'm read, as I'm as I'm listening to y'all and everything like that, I'm, uh, my brother um, Gerald um, Crosley, right now he's in LeBron uh, down in Rio de Janeiro, all right, and he just he, he, he basically pointed out something that night, like I said, as we were pointed out here tonight, all right. He said, I understand. Um, Brazil's going through crime and everything like that going in the country and all that stuff. Brazil is broke right now, you know, because of their, um, their economy, you know, and everything like that. But don't let that hold you back. That's no different than what's going on in Chicago, what's going on in, in Dale County, in his case, you know. And black brothers should not be afraid to travel here. If anything, this is still an opportunity. Maybe it's best that the country is going through a fiscal crisis. Because, just like my her mind said earlier in the show, this would be an idea. I guess time to come down here and start investing in the country. Why everything is cheap. Okay, hopefully it won't go through inflation. That's the only thing I worry about. But this would be, I would say, within the next 10 years, an ideal time to make a move on Brazil. Why it's still cheap. Yeah. You know, yeah. you can't stand there being afraid. You know. You know. Mm -hmm. So. It's, it's one more question. Oh, about, you said, uh, back, hey, uh, back, uh, back to the beach, the, uh, the, uh, after the process. Um, everything's Gucci, everything's sweet. Uh, they take your passport. And uh, they give you a, a ticket, and they'll tell you to come back the next day. They say it takes a little, a little one day process. And once you got your little appointment ticket, and you come up back to the uh, Brazilian consulate, uh, they call your number out. You pick your passport up, and they'll make sure you got the uh, Brazilian visa. If they check that the number's okay, uh, current everything's current, and that's it. It takes one day, one day process. Oh, okay. You do it online. Okay. You do a face-to-face okay. -face interview. Yes, really easy. Now, if you keep now, if you keep uh, getting your visa through this process, and you do it on a regular, the process is much easier now because you know what's going on down there. Oh, okay. Cool. 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 Yes, yeah, it is. I heard, you know, I, I saw a YouTube video. I, he was talking about traveling to Thailand, and he was mm -hmm. like, one of the one of the things he said was, um, one of the things he said he suggested as far as bank cards is going to the bank in person and telling them, "Hey, I'm leaving the country." So when they see the out of country charges, well, yeah, they won't that's flag the card. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, yeah, that's what they're saying. Yeah, with that. Tell your credit card company. Tell your credit card company to, uh, hey, do not turn my funds off. I'm going on such and such date. You give them the exact date. Well, give them a right. like, well, give them a couple of days traveling time mm -hmm. in between the countries. So mm -hmm. if you go from there for like ten days, make it out to fifteen days. Oh, okay. Because you know you don't know what's going. You have have a layover. Uh, you know, uh, you may have to switch flights. Extend it a little well, bit. Give it a few day grace period. I mean, once you arrive in the country, so your your credit card. So any transactions that come up pop up on the computer. You know, it's because you told it. You told the bank that I'm be at a certain time or certain place in this country. Do not restrict my card. That's very important. And you don't Anybody have to, you don't have to show up in person in most banks like Wells Fargo. You don't have to show up in person, but they do expect you to at least let them know no later than four days before you go on your trip. Oh, okay. No later than four days. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's good yeah. to know. Yeah, cause, yeah, cause he, he brought that up, you know, as far as traveling there. And I was like, you know, would that be pertinent to do it? Well, you know we'll cut the card off too if you are. I remember when I first um, when, I, when I first started going abroad, and I didn't, I didn't let my bank know, and they cut my card off. Oh, okay. And I was, I was shut off from my money for two days. Yeah. That's not fun. I know. <laughs> well, 
go, okay, so yeah, it's good to talk there like that. Make sure I'm good in the phone. Yes, sir. Hey, that's what we're here for, man. If we help out the brothers for, man, you know, come, you know, call in, ask questions, and this is what we get, you know. All right. Yeah. That's, that's what's up. All right, I'll, I'll let you guys go and over to God, book <laughs> with the, the information. That's the, oh, the kind of. Uh, yeah, I'm good with uh, Peace and blessings. <laughs> yep. Okay. All righty here. Yeah, uh, v, we got about 16 minutes left in the um show here. Uh, right here, we still got a lot of listeners in the um studio right now. If you want to charm in on tonight's topic, you know, fact or fiction about Rio, please press one. Unmute yourself. So we can see the number pop up and we can get you in on this call here. But um yeah, man, that that was a disaster. When I got my card called. Oh, Charles, you got um oh they popped up at the same time. Uh let's go to two oh one first. So do two oh one first, yes. Two oh one your mic's open. What's going on, fellas? What's going on, Charles? What's going on, partner? How you feeling? Who's calling tonight? Hey, what's up? I'm good. I'm good, man. This is Raphael speaking, man. Oh, shoot. Oh, my God. Now, talk about professional. You should have been on the <laughs> English show, man. Now, let, me, <laughs> let, 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 let me... This is a surprise here. Okay, let me let everybody know who Raphael is, okay? Raphael, oh, hey, how you doing, brother? I'm doing Raphael good. I'm doing good over here, you know, and uh, in the tropical weather in Brazil and Rio, you know, rainy, you know, um, yeah. getting getting ready to do a little a little tour to Egypt, you know, for a few days, you know, but everything is good, oh, man. Good. You know, um, this is the true I mean, the true part of the true low product, okay? The uh, the true yeah. <laughs> That's the true factor here. Oh man, I just want to stop, you know. Say what's up to you guys, and, and um, hope to see you guys again soon, you know, in November or in December, whenever you guys come. Oh, I'm oh, better come down there, Brad. We got to kick you down there. We had a good time <laughs> down there last year. Oh, yeah, yeah. We had a good time. We all hey, Ralph, out, yo, you know, can, you tell, can you tell some of the callers out here tonight, the girl who was um, walking us through the um, Hiroshima, our um, tour guide, can you tell her how... Uh-huh. how how many brothers in America dropped the ball on her? Well, it was, well, it was one brother, you know, that he was, um, you know, she wanted to get with him, you know, like when I introduced him. And what happened was that he was just making these false promises. He said, look, man, we've been talking for seven months, man, and you thought about you're going to come. And you're Can't not make making false any promises to him at all. <laughs> so, uh, you know, she decided to let it go, you know, because the guy just kept making false promises, you know, and she actually was waiting for him. And that's rare that she doesn't see a girl waiting for you, you know what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. And this girl, you know, she's a, you know, she's a professional nutritionist, you know, she's um, she's very educated, you know, and she was looking for that brotherly love, but eventually, you know, she decided to go one of her own kind. So sometimes guys, they let go good opportunities like that, you know what I'm saying? They, they don't come in handy like that, but if they like that, don't let it go, you know, at least. Quite a you know. So that was the story about it. Well, the, the you know the moral of the story is, guys got to think realistically. Okay, when you come to a country like Brazil and you meet up with a woman like like her, uh, educated, fine-looking woman like her, and a lot of y'all guys was just asking me about her left and right on Facebook and also on um, YouTube. All right, she's not men like that don't wait around. Okay? They don't wait around. You better make your move when you can if you get a woman like her. Okay? Well, wholesome, rounded woman. Very, very attractive. Okay? You know, with made an excellent wife. Okay? And all. But when you get them like that in Brazil, you move on. And I mean, really be serious. That's it. You know, be serious. Don't think that, oh, you're going to get with her one week, all right, and then disappear for the next six months to a year and think that she's still going to be around. 
No, that ain't going to happen. No, I'll tell that you that right happen. now. Nah. That ain't going to happen. That's unrealistic. Another, another, you know, factual, another fact right there, not fiction right there. Brazilian women, you cannot come with them with constant promises this, promises that, and you don't fulfill them. Because they'll move You got to follow through. You got to follow through. Gotta follow through. Everything. They'll, they will move on, they'll move on without you so fast. Okay, and you'd be like, well, she, well, damn, well, she's just like an American woman. No, no, she's not. You're full of shit. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, like I said, I constantly get these emails. Oh, also, also, you, Charles, hey, you know, oh, Charles, also, you got to keep communication too. You got to communicate with these women down there. Yes, but you, you communicate with them. You, yes. Communicate with them, yes, but show up at least enough to where they think they're in a rela or feel they're in a relationship. That's a that means you gotta put in the mile. Yep. You gotta put in the mile. Otherwise, I, I say this all the time. If you're coming down to Brazil to find a wife, but you're only gonna be here seven days, or you're only gonna be here ten days, or two weeks, don't come down to find a wife. Come down and have a good time. Exactly. All right? But if you're coming down here to find a wife, like my man Philly McFly Harris, like even Dwayne Banks, prepare to stay a while. Philly McFly Harris came down and said he was only going to be here a month. He comes back two and a half years later. And he's a married man now, too. He found what he was looking for, and he knew that him taking off about a month later, he was not going to have it. He stayed two and a half years. Okay? You know, now he's married. Exactly. Mm -hmm. you know, that's realistic thinking right there. You know? That's realistic thinking. we got to get these guys off the dream. And get them into reality. Okay, these Brazilian women. And also, too, this is another, you know, that's another myth. These guys say they go travel to Brazil and expect all these good looking women they see on Instagram and on Facebook. These women just gonna just drop, just, just gonna drop out the sky and land on their lap. <laughs> exactly. It doesn't work like that. No, but no, no, no. no. It doesn't work like that. You gotta be a hunter, man. You, you got you can't go about you can't go off beauty all the time. You gotta go off her brain. But she could be the most beautiful woman. How about her brain is all fucked up? How about she doesn't have a family structure? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So you can't go off the beauty only. You gotta go off her mind, her soul, her heart. You gotta actually research her, make sure she, you know she comes from a good family background because you don't want to end up dating a property without even knowing. You know what I'm saying? That's just the exactly story. right. You know what I mean? Because you got a lot of them. But you got to make sure you reach them. You know? So if you're coming out here for seven days, enjoy your vacation. But now if you're coming out here to live and spend a few months with a group of wife, take your time. Don't rush into the first thing that jumps on your dick. You know what I'm saying? You know, take your time. That's the first pitch. No, now, exactly. let me tell you something. Let me tell you the something. Rookie. Uh, there have been exceptions to the rule in this case with with, with, with Philly and Fly Harris. Okay, y'all seen his videos with his beautiful wife and my on my YouTube channel. You know, there are exceptions to the rule when swinging with the first hit. But come on. Yeah. She was grand slam. Lawyer, looking good, everything like that. You can't miss. They are down there. Lawyers and doctors that are single. They're looking for American men. They're down there. But the thing about it is, they have not lost the um the importance of marriage. Okay. Exactly. These women are looking to get married. Their families are expecting you to marry. Them. Okay? So you know, if you can't come down there, if you're coming down there to fuck and have a great time, yo, go ahead. Go ahead, stay the one or two weeks and everything like that, fucking get your groove on. Hey, 
you know, have a great time. That's what we're all about, too, having a great time. But don't go and try to lock in on a girl and you know she's serious and you're not. Don't play like that. Respect these women. Okay. I'll take the word. These women will cut you off. Oh, yeah, they will cut you off. Know, I've, I've seen these women throw drinks in millionaires' face and tell them to go to hell. All right? So it ain't about the money. It ain't about them being desperate either. Okay? You know, they want to be respected. Okay. Yes, nice. It's beautiful, beautiful pictures, the abs and the tits and everything like that. And as men, we think with our dicks sometimes and we forget that these women have brains and these women have feelings, that these women have hearts. Okay. And you, and you know have, what? These women open and these women open up to you. I'm yes, they, will. Open up. they will wear their the Brazilian women. To me, they've known to wear their feelings. They, they, they wear their feelings on their sleeves. Okay? And they hurt real easy. Okay? Oh, they're very sensitive, bro. Oh, oh yeah. Very sensitive. <laughs> very sensitive, you know. And, um, and, Raphael, you, your feet on the ground right now. You know. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I went home about about a week ago and all that stuff, we two weeks, two weeks ago. But you're, on the, you're on the ground right now. You ain't out, okay? And when you hear stuff about the violence going on in Rio, okay, do you, do, it, to me, it's blown out of proportion. Well, to me, it's made you know, it's like much more of what it really is. And, um, it's, it's basically where you go, anywhere you go in Rio, you know what I'm saying? You just got to... You just can't be going to places that you don't know. You can't be going to places that are in high red alert. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you don't live here and you're just coming out here on vacation, you know what I'm saying? Stick with the places that are recommended. Don't go off the beaten path for no reason because at the end of the day, it is real. You know what I'm saying? So you just have to use precautions. It's like any way you go around the world. You have to use precautions. You know, you got to remember, it's not in America. You know, you can't just pull out your phone and talk on the phone on the street. Because you got people that are hungry. You got people, you know, this is, this country is going through a recession, so huge crisis. So, you know, people will survive by any means necessary. So just be aware of those type of things. You know what I'm saying? You, you'll be fine. But just, don't just go out there showing up. Well, I'm going to wear a gold chain. I'm going to talk on my phone in the street like an arrogant brick. And then something happens to you and you say, oh man, I got robbed, bro. You make yourself a fight. You know? So, every, I mean, the stuff that happens a lot, all the violence is basically, you know, like in the northern, north part of the, north part of Rio, you know, the west part, you know, because you got the, you know, the drug wars going on, the, uh, the police, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that. And, um, and, you know, you have certain places, like I said, places that tourists will not go around. So if you don't, you know what I'm saying? You can stick to the suburbs. Exactly. Rio got a lot of rocks. Yeah, they got a lot of suburbs. Yeah, Raphael, tell me to yeah, catch you off, right? Tell me to catch y'all off, right? I want y'all to hold on the line here. For, you know, I'm going to squeeze in our caller, right? See if we get a, qu- a question or two in, um, in all in these final two minutes. Uh, V, can we pull on the next caller so to squeeze them in real quick? Uh, yeah, that'll be area code. Oh, where did we go? 404. Four four, your mic is open. You only got about a minute or two. Let's lay it on. What's up, folks? My name is, my name is Jared. Of course, I'm from Atlanta. Uh, I was down in Brazil. As far as mm-hmm. I want to say, it was in uh, December. But this is like my mm-hmm. second. It was my second time going down there. I went down there back in. I want to say it was oh five. I'm sorry, oh seven. Doing school in like a month. But I heard a previous caller ask about insurance. An insurance company that I use is called, uh, I want to say it's a, uh, uh, travel card or, uh, I mean, I can post the information. It only costs about $35. Of course, it covers you if my flight uh, is delayed, if your something happens to you, okay? 
the reason why I, I get it, I had a friend who uh, went to Columbia, got in, got T-bone, and unfortunately uh, for her, she had insurance and had to be medevac back to the United States. Um, what else? Uh, my main thing was just like, hey, just pretty much what you stated before, buy your ticket, slow down, experience what you can experience, spread the well. I guess that's pretty much it for me. All right, man. Appreciate your call, man. Appreciate you. Glad to get you in there, man. That's Um, drop the link in the Facebook group for that insurance company too as well. Alright. Uh, Raphael, yeah. I know you also know something about um, insurances too. You can um, drop a link for the brothers yeah. as well. Um, Geo you know. Blue International. Geo Blue is a, is a good insurance for you to use out there. It covers you if you get sick, if you gotta go to a hospital, if you gotta do medical visits. Um, they refer you to the best doctors and the best clinics that actually take care of expat, you know, so that's what you need. Geo Blue. That's a good insurance. Yep. So look it up, Google it up, and pop it works. Believe me, I'll tell you. Definitely pop that in the link, pop that in the group, and get it out there to that information to a lot of the travelers, especially coming down for the um, Beach Street Beach Party in November. Uh, Beach Street 2017, or our double promotion with Black Jet Setters and also We Are Rent for Less. This is John Thompson, legend. Okay. Also, the up and coming new kid on the block, Alan Harper. Okay, with Black Jet Setters. All right, we have reached the end of our show. All right, I like to thank my co-hosts, uh, Teddy Doyle, Raphael, coming on here. Of course, my right hand man V, you know, brought us on our second second show this week. A lot of people surprised me on here twice. You know, maybe that's a thought for you know upcoming weeks. You know, maybe we can do two shows a week. We'll see. But in the meanwhile, let's keep it happening. All right, I appreciate y'all support for supporting the Charles Tyler Show. Everybody who has supported the Charles Tyler Show. All right, um, we also still need more Patreon. Come a thousand um, black man's option Patreon at patreon.com forward slash E-T-Y-L-E-R-S-H-O-W. All right, and also please come. Let's make it happen this year for 2017, Easter 2017. Let's get ourselves together, get those, get our um, deposits in. All right. If you need any more information about the beach party, please contact me via Facebook or at uh, C, uh, at my email, Gmail account, C T Y L E R I S I V as Victor at gmail.com. All right. And we 